Hey there y'all, Disney D Prince here today with a different kind of video. This isn't a review so much as a uh, hang out with me while I rebuild my recently repainted Barbie dream house. As you can see just from the overview, I did take out most of the pink to make it more of a neutral background. I did leave the bathroom blue. If you guys can already tell which dream house this was, it's from a few years back. I thrifted this dream house for like $10, so this is all I put into it so far really. It didn't come with any furniture, so a lot of the furniture that you've seen in my prior reviews is going to wind up in this dream house, which I did already have kind of staged, but I had to take everything out of it to repaint it, so you guys are going to hang out with me while I redo it. So this is the first time filming in this kind of setup. So hopefully it all goes well. I'm thinking I know where everything is on camera, but usually I'm behind the camera. Today I'm going to be a little bit beside it slash in front of it. So fingers crossed that all this goes according to my weird setup plan. Okay, so let's start. So of course the first front, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to do our first floor. That is the biggest part. As you notice, this house didn't come with a door. That's honestly, like, in my experience thrifting, the most commonly lost piece to this set are these doors, which, you know, it happens because everybody wants to be, you know, involved in the thrifting process, but these doors pop off pretty easily so you just kind of wind up with whatever you're gonna have with whatever you're gonna have at the end of the day so we've got our uh, second floor that's going to connect right on top of that this was a bright pink one as you can see from the bottom I didn't bother painting the bottom because these things eat up a ton of spray paint when trying to actually cover everything and as you can tell there's still like a hint <clears throat> of color that's peeking through but I'm gonna kind of just do what I can with these because there's not much option um, so this side is actually really easy to put back together because it's only like three pieces. But we do have one of our little, uh, little, what do you call it? Our little railings that also needs to go back and it's the four, not the three. There are two different ones. But as you can see, since we match the color to the railing, it's gonna look a little bit better, I think. And these big pieces, I actually had to take them apart into like a bunch of different pieces because they just don't actually fit right when you're trying to paint them flat. There we go. So, as you can see, it already looks pretty good, in my opinion, but... We've got our third floor also. This was another one that was bright pink. So, we're going to do our best to make sure that this all looks at least neutral. So, we've got that, and then I think that's where I end on the camera visibility. Yeah, that's where I end on camera visibility, unfortunately. So I have to tilt up to get a little bit more visibility. So we will grab our last piece right over here, which is this part. Which I had to sand off a bunch of 
the smaller like attachment pieces like right here at the bottom because I didn't want them on my actual like dollhouse, this little like shoe rack that was originally right there because I hated the way it looked. So that is how that works. And then I've got to grab the roof piece, which we painted black and fits right into these here on the top. And now some people leave it at that when they're redoing theirs. We're actually going to build the second half also, just because. But we've also got another one of these that goes over here. <sighs> so the next part is a little more complicated because we have to build the garage, which also doesn't have a door. But it kind of just is what it is at this point. So we shall take some of these pieces out of the way because they're not for the garage. So our garage really only forms four pieces. So we've got this part, which hooks in to the bottom of our first layer relatively easily. And then we have our front little garage piece which goes into this part here on the back. And that's for the back of the garage. And then this part, I know goes somewhere over here, but I can't for the life of me remember how. And I might have to look at that again on the instructions. Um, but we do our other little back piece back there to kind of solidify that. And we take our bathroom and we do it like this because we were supposed to build it concurrently, and we didn't. But it does just kind of like pop together like that. I'm trying to figure out why this piece doesn't go in there. Does it go right there? Is that where I'm missing it? I feel like there was something else, but that must have been it, because it fits. There was something right there, I thought. But alas, such is life. Then we have this piece, which forms the back of our bathroom wall, which also kind of snaps into there. And then we have this piece, which also snaps into our bathroom. And there's what was our bathroom. This part had to be repainted. But, alas, that is the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And then, 
this last part for the roof has to connect and has to snap in. So we've got that part. And because that was done in like a wood tone, I left it like that. But it's still very fun. And we've got the back bedroom wall also. So we've got another piece that goes in right up front to hold our roof piece on. Which does go on a little differently than some of our other roof pieces that we've had. But we've got two matching roofs now and there is our first floor so it is reassembled but I did misplace a piece somewhere so I'm trying to figure out where I put that silver piece that's supposed to go in front of the garage I did find it okay this was the silver piece that was supposed to go in front of the garage I didn't have to repaint it so That's why I couldn't find it. I was like, where did it go? <laughs> so, it goes just like this. You can just tilt it back and uh, let it snap in under there. Very fun like that. And then I cannot for the life of me, I remember where this other piece goes that I have. Because I have this other piece. It must go in the back of the garage. So I don't really remember seeing it. It doesn't really fit there. for the life of me remember where this piece is supposed to go. So it must not have been very important. Because everything I remember being connected is connected right now. So. I have an extra piece that I painted. But I can't remember where it went. Because I've already got one that's under there. And this only really fits in the shorter sections. So, huh, oh well, such is life. All right, we're gonna readjust our camera angle. We're actually just gonna go down a little bit, I think. So I did decide to keep this little like hanging rack for right next to the mirror. I just didn't want to put this 
over the little like shoe rack area because it was kind of ridiculous because Barbie shoes really don't stand up. And even though I make this into a Ken house every time, I'd still rather have functional shelving. So that is how we put it together and how it kind of looks. Now we're going to start trying to make it livable. We've got to put the furniture in. We've got to move everybody in now. So we are actually going to start up here. Oop. Sorry, new tripod, guys. Still learning all the ins and outs. So you're learning with me. Uh, so we're actually going to start up there because I, uh, I de-decorated from that point. Because, I don't know, I just did. So, if you remember one of my Dee Dee's discount hauls, we have this big bed, which does fold up into like a chair, just not very well. Um, so, but that bed fits perfectly into our little nook. And it's very cute like that for our bedroom. It does take up most of the bedroom, but hey, so does the Barbie bed when it goes in there usually. Um, so, I don't feel too bad about that. I do also have this cute little, like, bedroom set for, like, babies. Which I normally style this as a second living room kind of thing, but I'm thinking today I'm going to style that as like a toddler room because I think these will fit kind of perfectly in there. And those can stack as bunk beds or they can be single beds. And I think the single beds, it looks a little bit, um, a little bit nicer that way. Because I do also have like a little like toddler crib like half bed kind of thing, which kind of has the same vibes, but it's a little short. So I think I'm gonna leave it out of this setup, which that is fully possible. I'm, you know, not set in stone on any of this stuff because, you know, a lot of it has just been stuffed in there from when I did videos and I was like, oh, this looks really good. I'll leave it like that. Uh, so, I have this vanity that I could put right there to where it would be like next to the full-size mirror. I usually have that on the other side. On the other side of the, um, of the bed, like over here in this area this area. Sorry, I'm still not used to where my hand does and doesn't show up in this setup. But that gives us sleeping room for two dolls, because two dolls do fit in this bed, and uh, two kids. I do also have a crib set that I haven't, uh, that I have not unboxed yet, that I want to put in this area. That vanity also came with a small chair. That'll fit right there. And that's about where we're at for these, um, for the top layer. Because we could put some little tables in there or like some toy chest in this area specifically. 
and make it into a toy room. I just haven't, um, I don't have those in my bag of stuff that was already posed in there. So we're gonna just try to put whatever we can that I already have. So like I had a pet bed that was right there. And we could put the little pet bed right in between them. It doesn't, just barely is the wrong size to where they fit in those corners. So this bed will go over here on the other side of our Barbie bed. Because they're very cute, but we're not gonna put it there. And then our second layer, because we're gonna go down now, I think. Readjust y'all to where y'all are the right height. Okay. So our second layer has got the bathroom and what has kind of generally been the living room the whole time I've styled this house. <clears throat> I did find this vintage sofa, vintage Barbie sofa from the 90s. And it's nice, heavy plastic. It's actually not completely hollow. And I love styling this house with this sofa because it just fits perfectly in there. My other option that I had up here before was the Barbie Life in the City couch but it just kind of, you know, it takes and it gives. I've got a vanity from one of the bathroom play sets that we put right there to give it a little bit of space, but not too much. We've got a toilet, very cute. It does open, so Ken can remember to put the lid down. It's got a little bit of pink, but that's okay. Again, I didn't repaint most of these accessories. I just repainted the, um, I just repainted the house so far because I did run out of white spray paint. And then I have a Dollar Tree clawfoot tub that's gonna go in there to make our house a little bit better or our bathroom a little bit better. And then I've got a little towel rack that a dog has somehow gotten stuck in. Very cute little towel rack that I generally style right here at the end of the tub. Gives us more room to pose dolls in the middle. And we've also got a little bean bag that we can put there or you know what I think we're gonna put the bean bag up there so mommy or daddy has a little bit of room to read stories very cute so that's pretty much everything that needs to go into the bedroom and the other thing I do have some extra like blankets and things that I can put on the beds but I generally put those on top of the dolls like if I stage them in there I also have this little like toddler bathtub that sometimes I stage in the bathroom if I'm gonna put it like right there just to give that room a little bit of extra dimension. But it looks a little weird when you've already got a big bathtub in there, so I'm not gonna put that in there. <sighs> so instead, I would probably put like this little um, like dress mannequin, you know, cause Barbie gets ready in the bathroom sometimes. And it's the same blue as the floor. So it'll work. 
but we've got lots of fun things left. We've got a little entertainment cabinet with a stereo, which can go right there, because we're also going to put a TV on there. I just got to find where it is in my, whatchamacallit, in my bag of things. As you can tell, I didn't really care about taking stuff out in like a nice order because I knew that it was going to get messed up anyway. But <sighs> I doubt as many dolls are going to actually get staged in this um, in this area again. But. They're still fun. Because I had a ton of dolls staged on this house, and half of them were like Stacy teenager dolls. So I was just like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to put all those back in there. But as soon as I find this stupid TV, Here's the ladder from our bunk beds that we don't need now that we've got them split up. Of course I've got like strollers and things, but those don't really need to be in there. And I did also have like a keyboard set up on the vanity because I originally had the vanity down in this area which I'm not going to do that this time around because I actually put it up by the uh, bedroom so we are going to do our damnedest to try and find everything if you hear that shaking that's me trying to get things out of the car that was at the bottom of this which is our cute Barbie Extra convertible, which does go down in the bottom. There's our TV. All the way at the bottom of the bag. It's from the Barbie living room set, which was very fun. I do recommend that one. So that's what our little TV setup should look like. And we can put that there. And then we've got laptops and things. I've got a little ottoman from the Barbie Life in the Dream House. Or not Life in the Dream House. Uh, from Barbie Life in the City. Life in the Big City. Or Big City Dreams, whichever one. Yeah, Big City Dreams. There have been a lot of Barbie titles over the years. So, that's pretty much it for the middle of the road. We've got that space, so I'm actually gonna put our little cat tree that we got relatively recently on there. Just because it's the right size spot, but it also still doesn't take up a lot of actual like front room, so I can still stage dolls in this area. But now we're going to come all the way down to the front floor. And we're gonna look at what we do with the kitchen. So I've got a Barbie fridge right here, which I think this may have actually come with this house, but I don't know, it's got a backer, so it makes me think it didn't. Uh, but I don't remember what playset that's from. But we stick our little fridge back there. I did have to shave down that back wall with my little rotary tool because there was way too many like things sticking out because this originally had a built-in kitchen. Here is our kitchen, our other kitchen part with our oven and our sink and our stove. Originally this had sound 
I don't think I have um, any batteries for that one, but it fits back there almost perfectly like it was built for that space. So that works. And then we've got our very neutral white table, which did come from a dream house. I think I ordered this separately from Mattel because Mattel, if you go through Mattel service, they do have stuff that you can buy. Like if your dream house is missing pieces, like if your kids have lost things, you can order those directly from Mattel, which is pretty cool. Like you can buy couches directly from Mattel for like five five dollars. So that's nice. If you can't find um, little like furniture packs very often. And we've also got a little high chair from one of our Stacy sets to go in the kitchen. Because it's very cool. So that's about where I think I would leave it for now. Just because there is not very much room. Like I would maybe put like these little uh, carriers in this area back here. Cause this originally is like the foyer, but I treat it more as like the entrance to the garage, like where you would put things that you would only need for taking them out. But 90% of the things that are in this house right now came from Barbie. Well, actually, I'm going to go 85% of these are direct from Mattel. Like, the only things are, like, the tub, the bed, the vanity, the little toddler beds that stack, and then the uh, towel rack and the tub. Everything else is Mattel. So, they look really good. But, now we have to decide which dolls are gonna get staged in there. But I think more importantly, which pets are gonna make the cut? Because we've got lots of pets in this bag. So I've got a sleeping Blissy. Very cute, little sleepy kitty. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think she fits inside the little sleeping basket on the, uh, on the cat tree. Might fit up here though. There we go. So we can put that one right there for her. We've got one of our little like dirty kitties from the wash and play place, place up that came with the um, that came with the dog, the puppy, and the bunny that were all dirty and you had to wash them. So we can put her down there. And we've got a couple of different cats. We've got another little sleepy kitty and she could go in the basket because she fits and then this one is like a little playing kitty but I think this one's supposed to be blissy so we're not putting two white cats in the same house and then we have got a couple of different options so like I have this doggy, and he's very cute. I don't think he's Mattel, but he's really cute. And I prefer dogs that actually look like dogs. So like, I'll put him down here in the kitchen. Begging for scraps, because these are the options we have when it comes to like Mattel dogs, they get really animated comical eyes. Unless you get this dog from Mattel, which is like my favorite dog that Mattel's made, except for the one that actually looks about this size that has some articulation. It's a newer one. I don't know if I've unboxed it yet, but that one can go up in the little like dog bed. And I've got a couple of other, like, more realistic dogs that are pretty cute. Uh, this one will probably be the one that we stick with. It's a cute little one. Well, not being too cute. And I've got a couple of bunnies, but those are not going to... Um, 
they are not going to be added to our collection. At least not right this minute. We have this dog, which is from the, uh, the cleaning puppy one that we got the kitten from, but this one actually doesn't look dog-sized appropriately, so I'm going to leave it off. And then we've got... Really, it's, a, it's about it for animals that I want to put in there. Because they've already got three cats and three dogs, which I think is a little excessive, even for Barbie. And all of these are going to be Ken's, Ken families. So if you have any objections to happy gay households, now's your time to end the video before I put them out. Bum, bum. Um, but these look very cute. So I gotta figure out which ones are gonna go out. Because I've got a ton of dolls that are in here right this moment. <laughs> um, And I do try to group by families, usually. So like I'll try to match the teen dolls to the adult dolls, to the baby dolls, and toddler dolls if I need to. But sometimes they're blended families because that's life. Uh, so we will, if y'all give me just a minute, I'm trying to uh, figure out who I have that's actually going to go out. But here's my updated magic earring, Ken. He's very cute. And of course, Merman Ken. And all of these dolls are on made to move bodies, or as close as I can get with them. Um, with bodies that Mattel has done. So that's kind of like where we're at when it comes to these. So, bum bum bum. <sighs> Sorry, I'm, I am organizing them into who is, you know, what age at this point. But we'll get there. Here's one of my rebodied boy Chelsea's on the new uh, cutie reveal bodies that are articulated. So he's gonna make the cut. Of course, my curly haired Selenial Ken will make the cut. And there's a couple of other dolls that are very cute. But I do love them. They're awesome that are going to make the cut. But it's really all about uh, who I've got space for. Because I do try to not overstage doll houses. But sometimes I really just like to have as many dolls as I can in there. Because <laughs> these go in my living room where I see them all the time because I don't have a doll room yet. So... I stage them in ways that make me giggle. So, yes, yeah, some of them will, you know, wind up in weird positions eventually, but it's okay. I've got a couple of toddler dolls that I usually stage around. And my favorite little skipper Ken, because I don't remember what his name was. I think it was Alan, but over the years they've changed Barbie names so often that I have no idea who anyone is anymore. Bum, bum, bum. But...
and some of them, like this guy who doesn't have a good color match, are on integrity bodies. And I've also got a couple of fresh dolls to stage around because I love them. They're all very cute. That's the goal. But I don't know how many are going to make the cut today. I think I'm going to try to take out any that are not actually on made to moves or any that are not, you know, fully articulated or that I just don't love. Like I have this guy who's on a uh, Nubian fashion royalty body um, and he's awesome he's one of my tallest dolls and I normally stage him like right there because he doesn't actually fit under the ceiling most of the time so it's either I have him standing or I have to uh, like kind of stage his really long legs <laughs> out somewhere um, so you know what that'll be our first doll so you know, we're going to stage him. He is going to be our NBA player because he's the tallest of our dolls. And I'm gonna give him a little white hair twink. <laughs> because you know what? That just says what it does. Uh, so I think for them, we're going to set them down here so they go right there uh, let's see who we've got that would go well for their family dynamic so these two are a little lighter than him so that'll work and we can give them this guy as well. Let's see, do I have any little babies that'll work? And we'll put him with them as well. So they've got four kiddos plus a little baby. We'll give them the little baby right there. And that'll be their family group. And the we're going to look at, so this guy, he's going to be one of our dads, and then Earring Magic Ken has left the club life for the happy home life, and they've got one of their little girls, who's a mermaid doll, plus a toddler with darker hair. And some little, we'll give them some fraternal twins. Yeah. Okay. So some fraternal twins right there. These families always have way too many kids, just FYI, <laughs> in my book. I always give them too many kids because I come from a big family of six kids. Um, and then we'll give them her and him. So, that'll be family number two. Uh, or should I swap out? Well, should I swap out the girl? Hmm... Yeah, I'm gonna swap out the girl on this family for this one. I'm gonna make her blonde. And then our next group that we've got, we're gonna start with Cam from Barbie Looks, plus our fashionista, Ken, right there. 
so we're going to put them right there. And then they are going to get these two who take after Cam's side of the family. A little darker. And we've got this little boy who's going to take after our fashionista Ken but get a little bit of Cam's hair coloring. And then a little baby right there that takes after Cam. So we're not going to put any of the other ones out there right this moment. So we've got three families. I think that's where we're gonna leave it because then I can stage them on the three different levels. I have more dolls, obviously. Um, but I don't know 100% what I want to do with them because there's really not enough room. Like all of these dolls were on this house, but it looked chaotic. So I think we're going to stage them just on three separate levels. So, let's see, maybe we'll put a couple in the car. Let's see, let's see. So, we will put, These two in the car. Man, there's no room for kiddos in this car, so they haven't had kids yet. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the story, and I'm sticking to it. They're not infertile. They're just living their best life. Bum, bum, bum. My favorite way to stage dolls in cars. I'll show you guys in just a second. <laughs> and this video is mainly for everybody that's been asking to see my doll houses. So this is just more of like a chaotic neutral kind of vibe this time around. So that's how I like to stage dolls. You know, driver's got his arm around the back. They're just kind of driving off into the sunset like that. So we've got a couple of extra dolls, a couple extra babies. Uh, and then we've got a couple of extra uh, articulated dolls that are left over, which I need to find another dollhouse to do this to, I think. So, let's see. So for our first level, we have the dining room set up. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take the one, one of the ones that only has one baby and put them in the high chair. So we'll do this one for the bottom floor. So we take our baby. And we slide him into that high chair right there. And we take our teens. And these are on creatable world bodies. And we put that chairs towards the back. Let me speak to you guys. So I've got a little more room to get a little bit closer without my put them winding up on camera because it's early morning when I'm filming this so I'm not ready for the day. So we've got big sis right there. We've got our little man, little dude, who is on his uh, little cutie reveal Chelsea body. He can sit right there. He 
does need a little bit more evenness to his legs. And we've got Big Brother right there. So he can chill right in this spot. Put the dog kind of begging for treats over there. And we've got our cam, daddy number one, just hanging out, waiting on uh, some breakfast. Just right there. And we've got daddy number two who's just kind of going to be chilling back here at the fridge. Just kind of hanging out in the back. Which, it's a very fun little setup. And then I can add in food or whatever later. Like, I do have like little like baby bottles shakes and things that'll just clip in and throw some snack food on the table without too much effort just hanging out there and we've got our uh, got our besties that are working on their laptops just hanging out there ready to go The modern family morning. Little baby food jar right there. Nothing too crazy. We're going to put Dad's hand is reading his phone because obviously. It's the early morning. And so that is our first staged room. So we're gonna move up to our living room. Now the living room, bathroom area has a little bit more room. So we're gonna put one of our bigger families. I think we're gonna put the biggest family there, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe. Let's see. Problem is, I don't have more beds for our um, for our teens. I only have like the toddler beds. What I need is that Stacy set that comes with the bunk bed thing. Uh, but I haven't seen it in stores in a while. So let's see. <sighs> so we're gonna put our Stacy hanging out down here in the bathroom getting ready. Her brother's gonna be sitting there on the toilet bothering her while she's trying to do her makeup. I think that's a good plan. Um, and we've got our kiddos that are gonna sit there and watch TV during the morning. We've got Dad that's gonna lay across this couch with a couple of babies. Let's see if I can't fit him on there correctly without angling him too much. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So we will move his arms up. Make a little more 
room. As you can tell, the staging is never a simple process because the minute you put something in there, it's the minute everything else wants to fall over. Okay. And you know what? We'll put the little one right there and the other little one right there. Doug's still sitting on the ottoman because furniture means nothing to them. And then we'll have other dad over here just kind of chilling on the arm of the couch. So we've got a little bit of the family dynamic over in there. I think I'm going to move one of the cats into the bathroom because obviously cats follow you everywhere. And then we're going to take our selves up to the third floor with another one of our big families. So we will have our brothers hanging out in bed. Right there, another one. And then we'll have Big Brother that's going to chill out in this bean bag because why not? <sighs> Big Sister that's going to sit at the vanity because again she's on a creatable world body so we just kind of stick her under there let her do her thing I think we got everything in there yep okay and then we could put our two dads just chilling in bed, waiting on uh, baby to wake up peacefully so their day doesn't start off rough. Ba -ba -ba. Just hanging out in there. As you see, their feet come off a little off the bed. That's okay. I usually cover that with some, uh, with a couple of, whatchamacallits, with a couple of blankets. Like, we could take this little blanket, and we just kind of toss it over them. And then I think that's really going to be where we end up, unfortunately for now, because I don't feel like digging through all of my other Barbie stuff to show you guys everything I could possibly do with it. So let's do a little overhead view. So we've got our happy family hanging out in bed. This one's getting ready. These three are waiting to... You know, use the bathroom. We've got this happy family down here. This one, bickering siblings down there. We've got our happy romancy couple. And we've got another happy family that's just hanging out in the uh, front. And I think that brings us really to the end. So, I mean, these things are relatively easy to repaint. If you guys are looking for them, the biggest hassle is taking them apart and actually getting all the spray paint and everything again. But I used my go-to paint, which is uh, Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer, two times coverage. It's about $6 a can. But a can generally gets you at least one coat of paint over everything that you need to paint, 
when you do one of these. So that's about where we're at. And now I'll have to take most of this out and put it away so I can actually take it out of my kitchen and put it back on its shelf where it belongs. So if you guys have ever wondered how I style a dollhouse, I don't style it too far off of what Mattel gives us just because there's not really that much space in Mattel houses. But one of these days when I have enough space on a workshop, I'm going to actually build my own wooden one out of like a bookshelf thing to where I can actually have full amount of like coverage and everything that I want to do. So if you stuck around this long to hang out with me while I put this all back together, Thanks for watching. I hope I answered some of your questions as to how do I stage things or where I get things. Majority of it's from Mattel. And uh, yeah, if you guys liked it, leave me a comment. And as always, follow along for some more fun unboxings because I don't normally do these videos. I'll leave that to like my froggy stuff and stuff like that. So be good. Bye.